In previous videos, we put down new tongue and groove flooring, framed angled ceiling and walls, and leveled the floor of our fill-in veranda remodeling project. In this video, we'll be hand-making jams for reclaimed doors we are restoring to match those in our 130-year-old house. The original door jams for the house had a rounded edge on them and we've kept this style in the new parts of the house that we've already built. So there's no reason why we shouldn't keep this for this part of the house too. Right, so for our door jams, the timber is pretty well dead on 70 millimeter. So we want a piece of timber from there out to here, which will need to be 70 plus 10 for the sheeting, plus an extra 20 or so. So it needs to be about 100 mils and rounded on that edge, on this edge, and then another piece on the inside that sits where the door sits. The door will be opening this way so basically you just got to cut those out to length route the edges and nail and glue it all together the only dressed timber we could find was 115 millimeters wide we need a hundred millimeters so we'll need to rip it down but this is a bit tricky with a 5.4 meter length and no bench saw so we'll need to cut each piece to length first. They need to be mitre cuts, but the saw won't cut 115 millimeters deep, so we'll need to do these on the flat. This means having to tilt the saw over by 45 degrees, using a square to make a pencil line for reference, and clamp the timber down so it doesn't move at all when we're cutting. It was smoking a bit when we made these cuts. Not sure why. Maybe the blade's a bit blunter. Right, we need two of those. Rather than cut the second one straight away, it makes sense to cut the top piece first because it has a mitre at each end. It just saves having to cut more than two of those smoky mitre cuts. We then check it against the actual door, just to make sure we got the length right. We then mark out the last piece, double checking it, because if we get it too short, we don't have any more material. Right, that's the first door jam cut, ready for routing. Right, I've got all the um, timber for the jams cut to length, the little <coughs> mites, <coughs> including one over here for the, the doorway into the bedroom, which doesn't actually have a door on it, but we still need to trim it off. The next thing we need to do is These main bits are 115 wide, but we only want 100. If it was 115, it's going to stick out too far, so we need to rip them down the, the length. The easiest way to do this without a bench saw is to clamp the timber to some trestles, hard to the edge, mark out a line, and then run a saw along. Now we can cut up to that edge because there will be another piece um, yeah, it looks like that that's going to overlap it. So we're never going to see that edge. So don't need to be too careful with it. We've 
do, however, need to make sure we trim the right edge. Got to bevel that way, bevel this way, so it's got to be this edge in both cases. Right, we have all the timber ripped down now, so I've flipped this one over, and these square edges we now want to make round. We do that with one of these. It's a router with a little curved, rounded, rounded bit on it. Set the clamps in the way. Just going to pull that over a little bit more. Probably the same with this one. it has a ball bearing on it which runs along the edge so that's why I can just run it along and it just shapes that edge nicely and to do the other side we just turn it over Sandpaper. Just to take any little ridges off and get it nice and smooth. I sanded this by hand for some crazy reason. An orbital sander does just as good a job, but is a lot quicker. And that's a good way of giving it a bit of rustic charm. You get a little bit of a lift with the two sides meet. Right, I've uh, routed all these and sanded them, so now we've just got to put them together. We do this by gluing, then brad nailing using fairly large brad nails that go around the corner because that holds better. We then wipe off excess glue with a damp cloth. If you don't have excess glue, you're not using enough. Once both jams are put together, we can then fit them to the walls. It's easiest to fit them to framing that's plumb, which this is. Now I want the door to swing in this way. So you put the rounded edge of this jam this way. So the sawn edge goes that way. It's pretty rough sawn, so I would just <coughs> approximate that. There'll be another piece going on there, so it's not right. Right, so Nail this at the bottom. Holds it in place. That's pretty good, so we don't need to pack that at all. Check it this way. Yeah, the ball's out of plumb now. We have to weigh up. Do we get it dead plumb and looking off because the wall's not plumb? Or do we just line it up with the wall? Well, you'd be looking at it like that. But when you come in from this angle, you all see a difference from the top to the bottom. So if it's leaning back a bit, the door will want to close, which is better than 
wanting to open I suppose so we'll make it lined up with the wall decision made That's bloody level right I lent that there how did it fall down who knows right beautiful nail there now this side Right, so we have a gap here, quite a significant gap. At the top it is around 16. So we need a couple of packets. We get a 10 and a 6.4. And it fits in there just tightly. Right, it's fitting in there nice and tight. <coughs> so we'll now nail that through the middle. The bottom, however, is a little bit bigger gap because. If you watch the video on the framing, this is out of plumb. Right, we're talking 40 millimeter gap. <coughs> so we will need four black tackers. So we want one in the middle too. You can notice 24. It's only two black ones. The green one. It's 3.2. It's pretty good. Into the end grain there. Right, into the top. <coughs> Nine mil gap, ten mil gap. So that one needs a ten mil packer. Right, this is the second part of the jam. <coughs> Which is the timber that goes in there. This is what the door closes against. And... After some time trying to decide what distance to make this piece relative to the first, we're then ready to nail it on. And the rest of them at that same distance. All right, we've got this um, second jam up too, uh, which was basically the same as the first, except we'd made that a little bit low. Um, this one had plenty of height because we'd originally built the frame before we'd raised the floor up. Um, but that was okay. We just trimmed a bit off the bottoms and you know, it fits in there snug now. So all done. Well, that's it for this video. In the next video, because we now have jams in place, we can line the walls and the ceilings.